وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وشد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى In this episode بإذن الله الكريم I'm going to speak about الغلو في باب العلاقة بالولاة والحكام Extreme either exaggeration or negligence an extreme exaggeration or extreme negligence regarding the rulers. We have extreme both ways. This topic of the relationship between the Muslims and the leader is a very important uh, chapter in the religion of Al Islam. In the Sharia, ah, it is a babun muhim, a very important topic. And the Sharia. Ah, has given it precision and has dealt with it correctly, has dealt with it uh, with utmost diligence. So if anybody goes outside the Sharia, I will either become extreme in exaggeration or extreme negligence. And our great scholars of Al-Islam have documented to us that middle path that we need to take regarding the Muslim rulers. Inshallah ta'ala, my aim is to talk about those who felt extreme in exaggeration. And then inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to speak about those who fought, fell into uh, extreme uh, negligence. So let me start with al-ta'ifatul ula, the first party who went into extreme exaggeration when it comes to the chapter of al-alaqatu bil wulati wal hukam How to deal with the uh, leader, uh, the Muslim leader, uh, how to deal with it. The first group, they fell into it from two perspectives. So I'm only going to fo focus on two perspectives, inshallah ta'ala. The first one is a takfiru bighayri dalil. They label the leader a kafir without evidences. The evidences uh, that they bring forward are not from the sharia. Ah. It's baseless. It is their feeling and how they feel a crime has been committed, the atrocities that were done, the tyranny of this leader. So then for them, it's kufr. Yani they see something to be very big, uh, and it may even be very big. It may even be a very painful issue, a very serious issue. But whether it's kufr or not, it's not taken from our feelings and the way we rationalize things. And the takfir is the right of Allah and His Messenger. They are the ones who can label a person a believer or not. ولذلك القاضي عياض رحمه الله says in his kitab al-shifa, the second volume, he says فصل في بيان ما هو من المقالات كفر وما يتوقف أو يختلف فيه. الإمام القاضي عياض اليحسوبي رحمه الله has a great book called al-shifa, where he talks about the rights of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. In there, he has a chapter where he mentions what statements are disbelief and what statements are their difference of opinion amongst the scholars, whether they are kufr or not. Uh, so he says, فَصْلٌ فِي بَيَانِ مَا هُوَ مِنَ الْمَقَالَاتِ كُفْرٌ وَمَا يُتَوَقَّفُ أَوْ يُخْتَلَفُ فِيهِ وَمَا لَيْسَ بِكُفْرٍ Those statements which are kufr, and there are evidences for it, and those which are not kufr, and those which are disputed. He talks about it in that chapter. And then he says, I'lam, after he gives the chapter, he says, I'lam, anna tahqiqa hadha al-fasli, wa kashf al-labsi fihi, mawriduhu al-shar'u, wa la majala lil-aqli fihi. That the concept of takfir, and to say this person is a believer, a disbeliever, and this thing is, this act is disbelief, and this act is not disbelief, he said this issue goes back to the Sharia. And the logic has no place in this issue. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, he said, Inna al-kufra wal-fisqa 
أحكام شرعية ليس ذلك من الأحكام التي يستقل بها العقل فالكافر من جعله الله ورسوله كافرا والفاسق من جعله الله ورسوله فاسقا ابن تيمية he says in his كتاب من هاج السنة النبوية the fifth volume page 92 he says إن الكفر والفسق كفر and to say someone is a فاسق or فسق or to say this act is فسق as well أحكام شرعية it's a شريعة jurisprudent warnings it's like saying this is واجب you need evidence to say something is واجب you need to bring evidence something is حرام you need to bring evidence something is سنة and you need to ليس ذلك من الأحكام التي يستقل بها العقل it is not something that independently is rooted from the aql. So somebody uses the aql, think about it, they look at a couple of videos, they see how bad this situation looks, and they say, you know what? Kafir. No. فالكافر, a person who, who's a kafir is, من جعله الله ورسوله كافرا. It's the one Allah and his messenger make him a kafir. والفاسق, and a fasiq is who? من جعله الله ورسوله فاسق. Allah and his messenger make you a fasiq. So the person who wants to say that you're a kafir, or you're a fasiq, or you're this or you're that, they need to bring evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. And it's mis it's not something you see it personally, I'm inclined, I like this, my sheikh in my local masjid said this is kufr, the mufti of this country said that this is kufr, no. وَلِذَلِكَ مِنُ الْوَزِيرَ الْيَمَانِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ سِكِتَابَ الْعَوَاسِمُ وَالْقَوَاسِمُ He said, إِنَّ التَّكْفِيرَ سَمْعِيُّ الْمَحْضُ لَا مَدْخَلَ لِلْعَقْلِ فِيهِ Takfir is textual based. يعني where you get takfir from is from the Quran and the Sunnah. And he said, this is in the takfir as sam'iyun mahdun. It's purely based on text. La madkhala lil aqli fi. Rationality and intellect has no place in it. And that's why Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he said in his great book, uh, Al-Kafiyyat al-Shafiyyah, fi l-intisari l-firqati al-Najiyya, known as al-Nuniyya, he said, al-kufru haqqu allahi thumma rasulihi bin nasi yathbutu la bi qawli fulani من كان رب العالمين وعبده قد كفراه فذاك ذو الكفران. That the takfir is the right of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And it's the right of the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. Anyone Allah and his messenger label them as a kafir, then verily that person is a kafir. And the takfir is a concept of أحكام شرعية. يعني falls under أحكام شرعية. The way you can't say this is halal and this is haram with no evidence, you can't say this is kufr and this isn't kufr. You need evidence for what you say. And that's, an evidence can be used is, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا تَصِفُوا أَلْسِنَتُكُمُ الْكَذِبَ هَذَا حَلَالٌ وَهَذَا حَرَامٌ لِتَفْتَرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ لَا يُفْلِحُونَ The second ghulu they fall into this group is الخروج على ولاة الأمور. They go extreme and they exaggerate in the concept of going against a Muslim oppressive leader. Now we said labeling a leader unjustly with no evidence that he's a kafir, we spoke about that. What about the other side which is, they say no he's a Muslim, I'm not saying he's a kafir, but he's an oppressive leader and I'm allowed to go against him. This is ghulu, this is extremism in the religion of Islam. Because remember what we said, anything that is not based on the Quran and the Sunnah is ghulu. It's either ifrat or tafrit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu ati'u Allah wa ati'u al-rasula wa uli al-amri minkum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, O oh, those of you who believe, obey Allah and obey the messenger and those who have authority over you. Walidhalika, the ayah has a very powerful uh, meaning. And subhanAllah, he has a powerful way that Allah wa Taala said this. Allah said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, those of you who believe, ati'u Allah, obey Allah. And then Allah repeated the word again. And he said, wa ati'u. You could have said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, ati'u Allah wa rasula Obey Allah and the messenger. But Allah repeated the word obedience twice. So he said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, those of you who believe, ati'u Allah, obey Allah. وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولَ and obey the messenger because the obedience of Allah and his messenger are unrestricted but the obedience of anyone other than Allah and his messenger their obedience is only when they are in line with the Quran and the Sunnah that's why Allah said يَا يَلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولَ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Allah said did not say وَأَطِيعُ 
ulil amri minkum. Obey those who have authority over you. He didn't say that. He said, wa ulil amri minkum, and those who have authority over you. Because the obedience of those who have authority over us is not unrestricted. If they tell us to do something evil, munkar, uh, something that goes against the religion, we say we don't obey you in this particular act that you are calling us to. We obey Allah, we obey the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We obey Allah, we obey the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will not obey you on this. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, as is found in Bukhari and Muslim, he said that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, من كريه من أميره شيئا Anyone who sees from his leader something he dislikes. And the leader is oppressive. He's tyrannical. He's causing mischief on this earth. And in munkar, evil he's doing. The Prophet said, فَلْيَصْبِرْ عَلَيْهِ Be patient on him. فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ أَحَدٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ خَرَجَ مِنَ السُّلْطَانِ The Messenger said, there is not a person who leaves the leader شِبْرًا Handspan. فَمَاتَ عَلَيْهِ And then dies from that. إِلَّا مَاتَ مِيتَةً جَاهِلِيَةً Except that person dies the death of a pre-Islamic jahiliya. Because the people before Islam, what they believed is the jahiliya before Islam, what they believed is that they have no one that they need, they need to obey. They had no respect for uh, the concept of leadership, the concept of law and order. They didn't like that. They loved the concept of corruption. ولذلك if you read the uh, the شعراء العرب like Imru Qais and uh, Shanfara and the likes of these people even if you read the um, وحرق الباه written by Abu Tib al Mutanabbi and others when he was speaking to Sayyid Dawla and you see this the way that they were yeah this is before Islam and even some of them after Islam this concept of uh, not seeing uh, for the leader, any sam wa ba'a, obeying him and listening to him, it wasn't. So that's what the hadith means, فَمَاتَ The person dies, مِيتَةً jahiliya. Um Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّهُ سي... إِنَّهُ Um Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّهُ يُسْتَعْمَلُ عَلَيْكُمْ umara. فَتَعْرِفُونَ وَتُنْكِرُونَ They will be used against you. They are going to be leaders on you that are going to run your affairs. They are going to be in charge of your lands. فَتَعْرِفُونَ وَتُنْكِرُونَ You'll see things that you recognize and you'll see evil things from them. فَمَنْ كَرِهَا فَقَدْ بَرِعَةً Anyone who dislikes this evil, فَقَدْ بَرِعَةً He is free from it. وَمَنْ أَنْكَرَ فَقَدْ سَلِمَةً and anyone who rejects it is safe. But the one who follows and the one who obeys him in the evil, then the Sahaba says, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Ala nuqatil. should we not fight with these leaders who are coming with these evil acts? They're doing wrong, crimes they're committing. Should we not go against them? The Messenger said, La ma sallu. No, as long as they pray. And as long as they pray is a representation according to the scholars, as long as he's a Muslim. Because this is what makes the person a kafir. And this is one of the evidences that scholars used that leaving the salah is kufr akbar. Because they said this in, in this hadith, the Prophet said, La ma sallu as long as they pray. And in another hadith, hadith Ubadit ibn Samit, the messenger said, Illa antara kufran until you see clear cut kufr from the leader. So if you bring these two hadiths together, okay, you realize that Illa ma sallu, Illa antara kufran bawahan is the same, it's one and the other. So leaving the salah is kufr akbar. If we do that, do that with the two narrations. Now what I want to say, brothers and sisters, is that going against a Muslim leader who's oppressive, I already gave an ayah from the Quran and I gave you two hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I gave you ayah from the Quran. Ya ya ladhina amanu ati'u Allah wa ati'u rasoola wa ulil amri minkum. I gave you the hadith of Ubadit ibn Samit which is in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim. The two most authentic books after the Quran. And I gave you the hadith of Umm Salama. Hadith Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha, which is narrated in Sahih Muslim. Now where do you go from there? If you're a true believer who believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment, you will obey what the Messenger told you to do, alayhi salatu wasalam, to obey your leader, to not go against him. Because wallahi yawm al qiyamah, you're going to be questioned, you're going to be called out, and you're going to be asked, did you obey the messengers that were sent to you? Allah said in the ayah, yawma yunadihim, fayaqulu madha ajabatum al-mursaleen, Yawma yunadihim, the day that they're going to be called out. 
فيقول وبستلم ماذا أجبتم المرسلين What have you obeyed from the messengers that were sent to you? So when the nusus come to you, you need to obey. So what we learned is making takfir or making a person a kafir with no evidences is ghulu, it's extremism in the religion. Going against a Muslim tyrannical leader, uprising against him, protesting against him is what? It's ghulu in the religion. It's extremism in the religion. Because Nabiullah Muhammad clearly and categorically commanded us what? فَلْيَصْبِرْ عَلَيْهِ To be patient upon him. So these are the two extremism that the first group of people fell into. الطَائِفَةُ الْأُولَى The first group, this is what they, the, the, the two that they fell into. Now inshaAllah ta'ala I'm going to go into بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ الْكَرِيمِ What the other group fell into. الطَائِفَةُ الثَّانِيَةُ The second group. What they fell into regarding the Muslim leader. Now inshaAllah ta'ala I want to show the great scholars of Islam. أَئِمَّةُ الْهُدَى وَمَصَابِحُ duja. When they saw these narrations regarding going against the tyrannical leader, how did they understand it? I'm only going to mention the statement of what? Two great imams, inshaAllah ta'ala. I'm going to mention the statement of two great imams. The first one is Al-Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. This is actually taken, I've taken it from the Kitab Al-Adab al sharia ibn Muflih. This first volume, page 195 to 196. And also the full story is narrated in the Kitab Al-Sunnah by Al-Khalal. And in the Qissa, the story here, is narrated in its length in the Kitab uh, As-Sunnah by uh, Al-Khallal, the way I'm going to mention it, inshaAllah ta'ala. Hanbal, rahimahullah, he said, اِجْتَمَعَ فُقَهَاءُ بَغْدَادِ The jurists of Baghdad, they came together uh, في ولاية الواثق, at the time of Al-Wathiq. Wathiq was one of the uh, Abbasi leader who called the people to Khalq al-Qur'an, the Qur'an being created. So they all came together. The Jews, these are the fuqaha of Baghdad. And in Baghdad, by, at that time, is the capital of the Muslimin. The big, great scholars of Islam came together. They all united to who? Ila Abi Abdullah. They came to يعني, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. They came to Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Rahimahullah. وقالوا له, they said to him, إن الأمر قد تفاقم وفشى. The matter has spread now, Ahmad. Ahmad, the matter has spread. It has gone to all over the world. It's spread. It's gone everywhere now. It's gone over to all of the Muslim lands. What are they referring to? The, the matter. When they say, Inna al-amra. The amr here they're talking about is, Idharu al-qawli bi khalq al-Qur'an. They're referring to the statement of the Qur'an being created. This has now spread over the land. Wala narda bi imaratihi wala sultanih. We are no longer pleased with this man's leadership and we are no longer happy with his uh, authority over us. This individual, Al Wathiq, who is now chosen to force, it يعني, wasn't just calling, يعني, they're imposing it on the people. They are making the people say that the Quran is created. This matter has now got out of, has gone out of hand. Ahmed has, this issue has spread. Ahmed started to debate with them. He said to them, Alaykum bi inkari fi qulubikum. Upon you, it's to reject this in your hearts. And what did the Prophet ﷺ say? So he said, reject it, right? Ahmed tell them, tells them, reject it in your hearts. Do not pull your hands back. Don't, don't leave the obedience of this leader. Do not divide the Muslims and break their ranks. وَلَا تَسْفِكُوا دِمَاءَكُمْ وَدِمَاءَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ مَعَكُمْ Do not be a cause for your own bloods to spill on the blood of your Muslim brothers. Don't do this on your brothers and your sisters. Don't let their blood spill and your own blood spill. وَانْظُرُوا فِي عَاقِبَةِ أَمْرِكُمْ Look at the final ending of this issue. Look at where it's going to lead to. وَاصْبِرُوا Be patient. حَتَّى يَسْتَرِيحَ بَرٌ أَوْ يُسْتَرَاحَ مِنْ فَاجِرٍ be patient until the one who is obedient is going to find ease and an opening and the people are going to find ease and opening from the oppressive one. وَقَالَ أَحْمَدْ went on to say, لَيْسَ هَذَا and this isn't. What is he referring to? يعني نَزْعُ أَيْدِيهِمْ مِنْ طَاعَتِهِ يعني Pulling their hands back from his obedience. Ahmed said, لَيْسَ هَذَا This is not صَوَابًا It's not the correct thing to do. 
هذا خلاف الآثار. This goes against the text. Ponder here. Ahmed is saying, going against a man who's calling the people to kufr. Kufr. Ahmed believes it. خلق القرآن is kufr. Ahmed's statement is clear. The imams of Islam and the Muslimin are unanimous in agreement that the خلق the Quran being makluq is a kufr بالله العلي العظيم. Ibn Qayyim mentioned that 500 imams transmitted consensus in this matter. يعني سجماع. There's no difference of opinion. Amongst the Muslims, that the saying that the Quran is created is kufr. With that being said, Watiq is imposing on the people, it's been forced on the people, it's been spread onto the people. Ahmed is saying, go against this man, opposing him, uprising against him. Ahmed is saying, This is not correct. This goes against the athar. What athar is he referring to? He's referring to the hadith that we mentioned. By the way, those hadiths are just little compared to the many other hadiths. So is it, does it make sense to call yourself athari? And you say, I am athari, I am athari. Ma'adalika, you are in a position to the athar. You are in a position to the what? Athar. And then that statement, it's the statement of Al-Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, what he said about this issue. And how he understood the ahadith that we mentioned regarding going against the Muslim uh, oppressive leader. The second quote, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to give you is um, Al Imam Hassan al Basri, rahimahullah. Al Imam Hassan al Basri, a man came to him and he said to him, he said to Ahmed, he said to Hassan al Basri, the man said to Hassan al Basri, Lakad kun tu a'rifu ka say al qawli fil hajjaji. You used to say bad about hajjaji ibn Yusuf al Thaqafi. You didn't hold a good opinion regarding Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al thaqafi Whenever you spoke about it, whenever you said something about him, it wasn't good. Yani you held a bad opinion regarding Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al thaqafi غَيْرَ رَاضٍ عَنْ سِيرَتِي And you were not happy with this man's biography. You're not happy with this man's uh, personality and him and what he does. You don't like it. فَقَالَ الْحَسَنُ حَسَنُ said, أَيْمُ اللَّهِ By Allah, I swear. Today I hold even a worse view regarding him. And I blame him even more today. And I put him down even more now. But for you, but no, may Allah cure you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, from any harm and any problems. May Allah protect you from harm and any problems. أن جور الملوك نقمة من نقم الله تعالى. The oppression of the leaders is a punishment from the punishments of Allah. ونقم الله and the punishments of Allah لا تلاقى بالسيوف. It is not faced. It is not uh, responded with by the sword. وإنما تتقى وتستدفع بالدعاء. The way to repel this oppression of this tyrannical leader and this punishment. That Allah has sent to us subhanahu wa ta'ala is by what? By doing dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wat tawbah and repenting to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal inabah returning back to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Wal iqla'ah. Wal iqla'i ani dhunubi. And also to uh, free ourselves from our shortcomings. Ibn al Jawzi mentioned this in his kitab, uh, Adabu Hassan al Basri, uh, page 100 and uh, 15. So this statement of Hassan al-Basri shows us Rahimahullah ta'ala that the tariqah to salaf, the way that the salaf Rahimahullah wa is that even that though this leader, even that though this leader is an oppressive leader, a criminal, a tyrannical leader, and he's doing so much mischief, the salaf Rahimahullah, they believe to make dua for that leader, for Allah to guide him subhanahu wa ta'ala. They also believed to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They also believed to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They also believed to uh, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for the removal of uh, sins and the rectification of their own sins. And the Salaf rahimahumullah, if they actually feared, and they were scared rahimahumullah, that the people are going to go against a ruler 
and there's going to come from it evil and bloodshed and the honor of women and children and everyone becoming destroyed. What the Salaf they would do is to get rid of this uh, or bring an end to this up, uh, uprise and this protest. They may even praise a person, a leader. They may praise him for that particular situation. Like for example, Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah. He was asked about Hajjaj and when the uprise happened against Hajjaj ibn Yusuf and the people were going against him. Hassan al-Basri was asked at that moment, he's a alim, he realized what he says to his people can change the course of many people's lives. So Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, he said, Hajjaj, yatlu kitab Allah. He reads the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he gives reminders, the reminders of the righteous people. And he feeds food to the needies. He chooses truthfulness. And he grabs the grabbing of the oppressive ones. Then they said to him, what do you see? In, in regards to going against him, to uprise against him. And then he said, Ittaqullah, hafi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa tubu ilaykum, wa tubu ilayhi, wa tubu ilayhi and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yakfikum jawrahu, Allah will suffice you from his oppression. This you can find it in the kitab, Adabu Hassan al Basri ibn al Jawzi, page 107 to 118. So the Salaf rahimahullah, that was their manhaj, that was their tariqah, that was their way. Now inshallah ta'ala, I want to go into the path of the other group, al-ta'ifatul-thaniyah, the second group, who also fell into extremism. And inshallah ta'ala, I want to point out how they fell in, into extremism with regards to the Muslim leader. The first thing is, ishtighalu duat they visit the Muslim uh, du'at, the Islamic du'ats, the people in da'wah, they visit them with what? Bidikri mahasim al By sitting down and mentioning the good of a leader and praising him and going overboard in praising him in private sittings and, pr and uh, public sittings. You see them on social media, on Twitter, all day praising a particular country or a particular leader يعني, consistently and going overboard and rather some of them go overboard by nadmul ash'ar and poetry for him writing maqalat and taghridat and tweets and uh, virtues and the and claiming zuran wa buhtanan wa tadlila with ignorance calling this manhaj that they've created and they've made up calling this manhaj ahli sunnati wal jama'ah so saying that this is the method methodology of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Without a doubt, La Shaka and Hada Jahlum Bidinillah. This really shows their ignorance of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lying about the methodology of the Salaf. And it really goes against what? It goes against clear cut statements of the great scholars of Al Islam when it comes to the issue of the leaders. Whether that leader is oppressive, or whether that leader is just and upright. Doesn't matter. I'm going to quote a couple of scholars, inshallah ta'ala. The first Imam I'm going to quote is a Shaykh Abdullah ibn Abdul Rahman Aba Butain, Rahimahullah. He said, Wawaliyul Amr, the Muslim leader, in yud'alahu. We make dua for the Muslim leader. La yumdahu, he's not praised. And we make dua for the Muslim leader. We say, Allahumma mahdihi, Allah, oh Allah, guide him. That's what we say. Lakin la yubdahu, he's not praised. La siyama bima laysa fi, especially in that which is not in him. I want you to understand the statement of Abu Butayn here is saying, la yumdahu, he's not praised. That's unrestrictedly, he's not praised. La especially, he said, bima laysa fi, it becomes even worse to praise him in that which he isn't. So if you praise him in what he is, then he said, la yumdahu, he's not praised. It's evil. 
And then he said, especially if you praise him in what it gets worse. بِمَا لَيْسَ فِي that which is in, in, in him. وَهَاُولَاءِ الَّذِينَ يَمْدَحُونَ وَهَاُولَاءِ الَّذِينَ يُمْدَحُونَ وَهَاُولَاءِ الَّذِينَ يُمْدَحُونَ فِي الْخُطَبِ Those who are being praised in the khutab. Yani the leaders that are being praised in the khutab. هُمُ الَّذِينَ أَمَاتُ الدِّينَ They're the ones who kill the religion. Yani they kill this religion. فَمَادِحُهُمْ مُخْطِئ The one who's praising them is wrong. فَلَيْسَ فِي الْوُلَاةِ الْيَوْمِ Ibn uh, Abu Butayni said, there isn't in the leaders today. Man yastahiqul madha, the one who deserves to be praised. There's no leader who deserves to be praised. Wala an yuthna alayhi wa innama yud'a lahum. But what we do is, we make dua for them. Bit tawfiqi wal hidayah, that Allah gives them the ability to understand and the ability to follow the religion and guidance. So look at this statement again. He's saying, فَلَيْسَ فِي الْوُلَاةِ There is not in the leaders today. الْيَوْمَ Today. مَنْ يَسْتَحِقُ الْمَدْحَ I want you to understand. Abu Butayn, Shaykh Abu Butayn, رحمه الله, he's been a kabir ulama in the Saudiya al-Thaniya, the second Saudi government. And the second Saudi dawla was built by who? It was built by Turki ibn Abdullah ibn Muhammad ibn Su'ud, who died the year 1282 Hijriya. He's saying then, that there is no one فَلَيْسَ فِي الْوُلَاةِ مَنْ يَسْتَحِقُ الْمَدْحَ That really shows the importance of understanding what is منهج السلف in Aymatah. I mean, we were told to listen and we were told to obey. We were told to uh, يعني, not go against the Muslim leader who is tyrannical. All of that is منهج السلف because the Messenger said it and that's what the Salaf الصالح رضوان الله عليهم أجمعين was upon. As for sitting down and praising the leader, especially sometimes in things that he isn't, for example, this is not from the path of the Salaf. Especially when Allah gets worse if he's praised for, when the people praise him that which is not. And this is what then makes Manhaj Salaf look like a Tanzim and makes it look like what it isn't. This is what makes Manhaj al-Salaf and the Salafi way look like what it isn't. Another quote, insha'Allah ta'ala. Shaykh Salah al-Fawzan was asked, وَقَدْ سُؤِلَ عَنْ مَدْحِ الدَّاعِيَةِ لِلْوُلَادِ A Muslim da'i is praising the leaders. He said, يَلْزَمُهُ الصَّمْتِ Upon him is to be silent. وَإِذَا أَرَادَ أَنَّهُ يُبَيِّنُ لِلنَّاسِ If he wants to clarify something to the people, يُبَيِّنُ He clarifies to them أَنَّ حُكْمَ الْإِسْلَامِ طَاعَةُ وُلَاةِ الْأُمُورِ He should clarify to the people that the ruling in the religion is to what? It is to obey the Muslim leader. وَالسَّمْعُ وَالطَّاعَةُ We listen to him and we obey him. لَهُمْ بِمَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ وَمَا أَمَرَ رَسُولُهُ That we obey him, the leader, and we listen to the leader. In that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded and that which his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded. والصبر على ما يحصل منهم من خطأ لا يصل إلى حد الكفر، and that we show patience to the mistakes that come from them as long as it doesn't reach disbelief. That's what's upon us. هذا منهج السلف. As for praising, Sheikh Salah Al Fawzan he said يلزم الصمت. Upon you to be silent. Be quiet. Sheikh Salah Al Fawzan that's his statement. Sheikh Salah Al Sheikh he mentions a كلام which is جام a very comprehensive speech. I'm going to read it on you إن شاء الله تعالى. He said, Sheikh Salah Al Shaykh, Wafakahu Allah, he said, Ad Dua'u liwulati al umuri shayun wal madhu shayun akhar. Making dua for the Muslim leader is something, is one thing. Making dua for the Muslim leader is one thing. Wal madhu shayun akhar. And praising the Muslim leader is something else. Al madhu la yajuzu. Praising is not permissible. لأنه يراد به الدنيا. The one who's praising is looking for a worldly gain. وأما الدعاء. As for the dua, فيراد به صلاح الدين والدنيا. But the dua, the aim for it is what? To perfect this dunya for the the leader himself and the people who's governing. And the آخرة. فالدعاء. The dua. He said is what? فالدعاء مبعثه. أمر شرعي لله. الدعاء where it comes from is or where it's rooted from 
is a commandment from Allah Azza wa Jalla. And Allah commanded us subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَمَّا الْمَدْحُ As for praising, فَلِأَهْلِهِ مَقَاسِدُ مُخْتَلِفَةً The people have different objectives in why they praise the leader. وَلِهَادَ الْعُلَمَاءُ And because of that, the scholars, يَدْعُونَ They make dua, the scholars. وَلَا يَمْدَحُونَ They don't praise. مَدْحًا مُطْلَقًا An unrestricted praise. قَدْ يُثْنَى قَدْ يُثْنِي بَعْضُهُمْ بِثَنَاءٍ خَاصٍ some of them may be praised in a specific restricted place. Muqayyadin restricted. Lidhuhuri fa'idatin. Because of a benefit that might become clear. Amala amilahu waliyul amri. That the Muslim leader might have done. And so he makes a dua. And I gave an example of um, Hassan al-Basri. He praised someone he said that was what? Evil. He saw Hajjaj to be evil. But when he saw the people going against him, there was a maslaha for him to praise Hajjaj so the people don't. Go against him. If there's a maslaha, no problem. If there's, no, if there's a maslaha, a greater maslaha is going to be achieved. No problem. Or the person is doing this so that it encourages the leader specifically in this restricted issue to do something better, then no problem. To make it a norms is the issue that we're talking about. That your manhaj, your tariqa is wherever you sit, where social media, you've got the flag of one uh, of a particular country on your Twitter. Your, the name of that country is on there. You're always praising that country. This is the word we're talking about. Look what he says. لكن هذا على استثناء. Salah al-Fawzan says, Sheikh Salah al-Sheikh says, this is an exception. To praise him for a maslaha is an exception. ليس قاعدة مطلدة. This is not an ongoing thing. يثني لتشجيعه على الخير. You praise him to encourage him in good. وترغيبه فيه وحثي عليه. أما المدح as for praising him. فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ صَنِيعِ السَّلَفِ الصَّالِحِ This is not the way of the pious predecessors. وَإِنَّمَا مِنْ صَنِيعِهِمْ The way of the Salaf is الدُّعَاءُ It's to make dua for them. لِأَنَّ الدُّعَاءَ مِمَّا يُرْجَى بِهِ صَلَاحُ دِينِهِ Akhirah is what, what is desired from making dua for the leader. The person when he makes dua for the leader, it's يوم صلاح الدنيا صلاح دينه You're making dua for Allah to perfect this person's religion. And of course, if he becomes perfected, then of course it's going to benefit the, the, the people he's governing. وَإِذَا صَلَحَ دِينُ وَلِيِّ الْأَمْرُ صَلُحَ بِهِ شَيْءٌ كَثِيرٌ And if the religion of the leader becomes perfected, then many of the things are going to be perfected. Like in these people, their whole entire agenda, subhanAllah, is to praise a particular leader, a particular country. And they refer to this as مَنْهَجُ salaf The way of the the Salaf. The second thing that this, uh, ex these extreme party fall into when it comes to the lead, the Muslim leader, is they consider some wata'a, obeying and adherence only to a particular leader of a particular land. As for the other Muslim countries, their leaders, they see that they can uprise against it. They can speak about it. Rather, some of them, they speak about other leaders of other countries. They speak about them. When on the other hand, they claim to be calling to what? Obeying and listening. So what do they do? They've actually combined between the two extremism. This people, they've combined between two extremism. Which is what? Praising one leader by going extreme and calling to the uh, uprise and the uh, uh, khuruj of another government or another system or another leader. That's the truth. And if they only stopped there, it would have probably been better. But what did they do? They tried to make usul for this. <laughs> they started to make usul. But asalu lihadihi dalala, this misguidance of theirs, they tried to make dawabit and usul from it by bringing a hadith and quotes here or there from the Salaf filling it up with a book or a risala that they've written. And this, subhanAllah, made the da'wah salafiyya, the balanced way, look well, like what it's not. And they falsely attributed this to the manhaj of, of the salaf. From the, one of the greatest extremism that they fell into, which is, They entered into the fitna of blood. They entered into issues 
of another country, for example, Libya, and they gave verdict to a particular group over another group, and from their blood spilt happened. Something that Salafiyya and Ahlul Sunnah were always known to be further from and call against, not to call the people to fit on of blood. But what did they do? They entered into these issues. They spoke about fitan al dima wa sira'at al dakhiliyati bayna al tawa'if al mutanazi'ati fi bilad al muslimin. And they gave tashji' to a fariq ala fariq. And they said, You are right, you are wrong. And then this caused blood amongst the Muslims. And it caused non Muslims to enter the land and take the tarawat of the Muslims. All under the what? Manhaju ahli sunnah. Manhaju salafi. Ta'zimu rawabit al jahiliya. Venerating and glorifying um, Jahili bond. Islam came with the bond of Iman and Tawheed. They've replaced that with the concept of Mustalah al Wataniyyah, nationalism. And they've uh, pushed aside Rabitla to Dini wal Aqidati, in which the Sharia came with. They removed that and put that, put that aside, which then allowed the liberalists and the secularists to come under your nationalism, your country. Shaykh ibn Uthaymin, rahimahullah, in Liqa' Bab al Maftuha, in the Raqam 48, he spoke about this issue. He said, Thumma inna al wajiba ya ikhwani, that which is obligatory upon us, brothers, Allah nakuna wataniyina, we should not be nationalists. Waqawmiyin. أي لا ألا نتعسب لقومنا. We don't have fanaticism to our people and our country. لأن التعصب الوطني قد ينض ينضم تحت لوائه المؤمن والمسلم والفاسق والفاجر والكافر والملحد والعلماني والمبتدع والسني. Under the term nationalism, many people fall under a Muslim, a non-Muslim, a kafir, a mulhid, an atheist. A secularist, a liberal, liberalist, a mubtadi, an innovator, a Sunni, a Shia, all of them. Watanun yashmalu kullaha ulai. A country that is shared by everybody. فإذا ركزنا على الوطنية فقط. Ibn Uthaymin says, if we only focus on nationalism, فهذا لا شك أنه خطير. Then the matter becomes very problematic. It becomes very dangerous. لأننا إذا ركزنا على الوطنية, because if we give uh, our importance to focus in on nationalism. Jaa insanun mubtadi'un, an innovator will come to us. Ila insanin sunnin, he will come to a person of the sunnah. Wa qala lahu, and he would say to him, Ana wa iyaka mushtarikani fil wataniya. You and I, we share this country. Laysa laka fadlun alayya wala ila wala liya fadlun alayka. Laysa laka fadlun alayya wala li fadlun alayka. I have no virtue over you and you have no virtue over me. وهذا مبدأ خطير ابن عثيمين says this is a very dangerous path and a very dangerous way في الواقع in reality والصحيح هو التركيز على أن نكون مؤمنين and that which is right is that we focus on being believers he also said in the sharh of Riyadh al-Salihin the first volume page 66 he said حب الوطن loving your country in Kana, if it is, Islami, if it is because it's a Muslim country, then you will love that, no problem. Islam is a Muslim country. But there is no difference between your country, where you were born, or another far Muslim country. There's no difference for you. Islam Because they're all Muslim country. يجب أن نحميه. We should protect that Muslim country as well. Okay, so this is very important, powerful statement that the concept of al-Watania and what it is. Inshallah, Taala will do a lecture on it and speak more details regarding it. The extremism that they fall into is as-sukut عن المنكرات إذا صدرت silence of if evil comes from. إذا صدرت من المقربين من الولاة والحكام. If it comes from the Muslim leader, if a sin is done, a crime is committed, and if something wrong is done, they're silent about it and they won't say anything about that evil. Rather, Subhanallah. What's even shocking is sometimes they may even try محاولة التبرير to make excuses. 
and they create وَخَلْقِ الْأَعْضَارِ They create excuses for the leader. If they were only silent, then maybe. But they're not only silent, they make excuses and they come out with justifications. إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Number seven. اِتِّهَامُهُمْ They start to suspect you. مَنْ لَا يُوَافِقُهُمْ If you do not agree with them in a political stance regarding two countries that may have a conflict, if you say, I have nothing to do with this, I don't enter these issues, my manhaj never changes for a particular country or the, the, the fight and the battle of a country. My da'wah is nothing to do with a country. It has nothing to do with countries. My da'wah is based on the Quran and the Sunnah. Once you say that, they start to throw at you what? They start to throw at you accusations and they start to call you ikhwaniyun, sururiyun, hizbiyun. They start to call you musalsalun la yanqatu'u min tuham suspicions and accusations that have no ending ending or because you didn't agree with them in their political stances it's like that they taken the uh, uh, innovated political concept which is known as if you are not with me you are against me i'm going to conclude there inshallah ta'ala anything which i have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaytan and allah and his messenger are free from it سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أستغفرك وأتوب إليه. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. How can you do a two-second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward. That could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.